on. Is this on yet? Yeah. Tell me when it's good. Is it good? Good evening. How are you guys doing? Good. We've got some people joining us on live stream, so I've been trying to wave to you guys, but hello, people on the live stream. It's good to see you all. I'm Reverend Steph Martin. I'm the associate pastor here at Northmont. It is wonderful to see all of you this evening as we gather together for our first experimental Wednesday evening worship that we'll be doing tonight. I don't have any actual announcements, but uh, Ben does, so I'll hand it over to Ben. Good evening. All right, so just just really just two things um, that are a plug for me. Uh, <laughs> the first is uh, we, I am still doing Sunday school uh, called One Book, One Story, and it is uh, something that any of you can click on and enjoy. It's uh, right now isn't interactive. It's just me talking. The reason I'm inviting you to this one is because it's at, we just finished the Old Testament, and I decided to do an entire Bible study just on the in-between time. So you actually, if, if you have been itching for a reason to read 1st Maccabees, this is your opportunity, this is your time to shine. Okay, so, I, that, so just, that's the first plug. So that'll be coming here this weekend. The second one is I am still doing Coffee with Ben, which is just a Zoom invite that I actually just sent out. It's every Thursday morning at 10. Uh, there are some lovely people who are here who attend, and it's it's a it's a weird, fun little time. I'm just gonna say that, and I think that for the people who are here, they can say the same. The people who are there are funny together, and so it's it's the kind of way that you want to spend an hour or so on a Thursday morning. So I just wanted to plug that. And um, we're certainly continuing to try to uh, do some different ministry things. Um, we have a, a couple of things that are in the hopper. I don't want to take up too much time telling you about them now, but just know that we are trying to uh, expand what we're doing from a ministry standpoint and um, make sure that we are blooming where we are planted in this uh, pandemic time. So just know that all of that is true. All right. Now, without further ado, let me lead us in our call to worship. Sometimes life takes us where we don't expect. Sometimes God takes us where we don't expect. In worship, we gather to get in touch with God's bigger narrative. In worship, we gather to expand our hearts. So let us worship the God of unending surprises. Let us worship the God of love. go before the Lord now, let, us, let me call us now into a time of confession. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the gift of the Holy Spirit. The proof of God's amazing love is this. When we were sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God in confidence. Therefore, confident in God's grace, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Creator God, being faithful has never been easy. You asked Noah to build a ship. You asked the Israelites to plant gardens and build homes while in exile. 
You asked the prophets to speak challenging truths. You asked the disciples to drop their nets and follow you. And you ask us to love bigger than society wants us to. Being faithful has never been easy. And as a result, we often miss the mark. Forgive us for holding tightly to human made plans. Forgive us for the times we say no to you so that we can say yes to ourselves. Unravel the grip we have on our agenda so that we can make room for you. Gratefully we pray, amen. God created you and knows you. God knows the very hairs on your head and your innermost thoughts. And God loves you madly. God made you in their image. And you are precious in God's sight. God forgives you. Calls you into accountability to change your ways. And God blesses you to go forth and love your neighbor as yourself. Let us go and share the good news of God's all-encompassing love. Amen. and loving God, we thank you for bringing all of us here together this evening, whether we're in person or on live stream or we're watching this later. We ask that in these moments, you open our hearts, you quiet our minds, and you help us to hear the word that you would have for us this evening. Move through us, move within us, and help us to know you're here. We ask all of this in your son's name. Amen. Our scripture reading for this evening comes to us from the book of Jeremiah 29. What I like about this passage is the idea that a lot of what he's saying at first, you know, is what I imagine would be would be expected. That Jeremiah spends a lot of time trying to get people ready, but then there's a twist at the end, and I try to imagine the people who were listening to this for the first time trying to get their heads around finding hope in a time that felt anything but. And it's kind of an amazing twist. Um, it's a hard challenge, but it comes with something simple, but I think something very meaningful. These are the words of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem the remaining elders among the exiles and to the priests, the prophets and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. This was after King Jesoiah and Queen and the Queen Mother, the court officials, the leaders of Judah and Jerusalem, the artisans and the smiths had departed from Jerusalem. The letter was sent by the hand of Elisa son of Shaphan and Jemariah, son of Hilkiah, whom King, King um, Zedekiah of Judah sent to Babylon, to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. And it said, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in a marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. 
multiply there and do not decrease, but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile, and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find welfare. My friends, these are God's words for us this evening. Thanks be to God. here for a while. There are situations in our lives where this is great news. When you go on a vacation to visit distant friends or family and you hear you're going to be here for a while, then there's a sense of relaxation and joy that comes with that news. But then think of all the times in life where that is less fun to hear. Getting called into the principal's office as a kid, sitting in a dentist chair, waiting in a waiting room, or even over 140 days ago when we were told to shelter in place because of COVID-19. Settle in, you're gonna be here for a while. That was not news that we were hoping to hear. But in our passage for today, that is exactly what God is saying to the Israelites in exile. The people had once again been disobedient and were worshiping idols. So God allowed the people of Jerusalem to be captured and taken into exile in Babylon. And I can imagine that these people were frightened for sure, but also they were probably a bit annoyed. I can imagine them thinking, okay, God, I get your point. We're going to follow you. We're going to behave. So when, when do we get to go home? Next, next week, right? Maybe two weeks. It'll be soon though, right? Because these people who were in exile had dreams about what their lives would look like. They had homes, families, relationships, and land. They had built communities and had hopes and dreams about how and where and with whom they would live out the rest of their lives. And in this passage, God's news unravels those dreams right before their eyes. And in our passage, God delivers a message to the people through the prophet Jeremiah. And as Ben just read, this is not the message that the people were hoping to hear. They didn't intend on staying in exile very long. Whoever intends on staying in exile longer than necessary. But look at what God says to them. Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Get married have kids, have grandkids, help this city flourish. God basically says, settle in, get comfy. You're gonna be here for a while. This is the new normal for the foreseeable future. And this news unravels the dream of the Israelite people. And thousands of years later, we, you and I, are also people with dreams. And many of those dreams may be unraveling before us as well. We all had dreams of what this year, this summer, this season would look like for us. And I'm sure I am not the only one who has had more than one of those dreams and plans crumble to pieces. For us being told to settle in, you're gonna be in a pandemic for a while, has caused some of our own dreams to unravel. We might feel like we are in exile right now. So how do we take the news that God delivers to us? On the face of it, I think we have two options. We can either fight our exile and be miserable, or we can embrace it and bloom where we are. So some, some pastors might take this passage and use it in a way to say, find the silver lining, embrace what you have, 
It's all gonna be okay with just a simple change of mindset. If you're not flourishing, it's just because you have the wrong outlook. And it's really all up to you and it's your fault if you can't find a way to enjoy this. Hope you could hear the sarcasm in that because that is not where I'm going and that's not where Ben went on Sunday either. Because as great as it would be to just say, change your mindset and embrace this time and everything is gonna be okay. I think that cheapens the emotional experience and disregards so much of what the people in exile and we are going through. The truth is, I don't know how to bloom in exile. I keep trying to put myself in the shoes of the Israelites in this passage, but I imagine that it took them years to come to terms with their new situation. They probably went through their daily lives because they had to in order to survive. But I also imagine those days were laced with sadness and a longing for home, a longing for normal, whatever that means. I think the good news though, is that they kept going. They never gave up. Even though they were sad or lonely or were missing what they knew, they kept going. They kept living, they kept trying, and they kept supporting one another. They didn't abandon each other, and most importantly, God did not abandon them. Our God has a bit of a history of sending people into unknown places, often with fear and anxiety, but God never sends them there alone. God sent Adam and Eve out into the garden, but the, out of the garden, but they had each other. God called Noah onto a boat and onto the waters, but he had his family. God sent Moses to face Pharaoh and rescue people from Egypt, but he had his brother. And even in the Great Commission, Jesus sent the disciples out into the world, but he sent them in pairs. Our God has a history of sending people into some frightening and uncharted territory, but God never sends them alone. God gave them each other, but God also goes with them through the Holy Spirit. The Spirit was with Adam and Eve in the wasteland. The Spirit was with Noah on the waters. The Spirit was with Moses and with the disciples. Even when they did not feel God's presence and did not know how to see or understand it, God promised to be present. God never abandoned them. And even though in our story today, the Israelites were in exile, God was with them. And God may not have been present in the ways that the people wished God could be. God may not have rescued them in the ways that they hoped he would. But God was with them in exile and God gave them each other to help them get through those tough times. Something that we missed out on this summer was two different mission trips with our middle school, high school, and college age students. And one of my favorite parts of mission trips is watching the groups bond and learn to work together throughout the week. Toward the beginning of the week, sometimes the kids try to be a hero and do things on their own, carrying packages of shingles or moving large branches or planks from the work site. But the further into the week we get and the more tired the kids get, the more they all learn to work together. They remember that heavy things are easier to carry when you have someone there to help you out. And we know conceptually that heavy things are easier to carry with multiple people. Sometimes though, we forget that this is true of emotionally heavy things as well. In high school, one of my favorite Bible verses was Galatians 6.2 bear one another's burdens, and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. We are called to help carry each other's emotionally heavy things. It's part of being siblings in Christ. The emotional sharing of burdens is, is, is admittedly trickier than asking somebody to help you carry a plank on a mission site. It takes more vulnerability, more honesty, and letting down some of our own walls. But I think we can also experience joy in some way by having someone come alongside us and be willing to carry some of our burden with us. Our burdens become lighter when we share them with one another, even just by talking about the emotional weight out loud. We are called to bear one another's burdens, which means helping others, but it also means being willing to be helped. We are called to remind each other that none of us is going through any of this alone. God gave us the presence of the Holy Spirit, but God also gave us one another. 
So please don't make the mistake of thinking I am speaking from a place of having figured this out in my own life. I am blessed to have a job and a paycheck and be able to pay for my own food and a roof over my head. But I'm preaching to myself just as much to all of you here because the last 142 days have been a struggle for me as well. Some days it's easy for us to find the silver lining in all of this. It's easy to bloom where we are planted. Other days though, we are fully aware of how off everything feels and trying to carry on in a normal way feels impossible. So we just don't. And I want you to know that it is okay to have days like that. But in those days, especially, I want to encourage you to talk to someone because even though the Israelites were in exile, they were in exile together. And even though we are living through a pandemic and social revolution and every day, every hour is uncertain, we are not alone. Some of us are blessed to be living with family. Others are blessed with a circle of close friends or neighbors. Some of us live far away from family, but technology holds us together. But all of us are siblings in Christ and some are here with us this evening, some are live streaming with us, and others are here in spirit. You are not alone. I am not alone. God has given us each other for support in the joyous times in life, but also for those days when everything feels impossible. So when you're having one of those days where it all feels too heavy and the feeling of exile is all too real, call somebody, text a friend, do something to connect with another person because exile isn't easy, but we are not in it alone. So as you leave here today, I want you to have a person in your mind that you can talk to when you're having an exile day. Right now, as the sermon ends and we move to the next part of the service, I encourage you to grab a piece of paper or actually pull out your phone and write down a name of somebody. Today or tomorrow, I challenge you to call that person or text them and tell them about this sermon. Let them know that if you're ever having a day where everything feels too heavy, you plan to reach out to them. That way on those days, you don't have to explain yourself. All you have to do is saying, I'm having one of those days, or today is an exile day, and your friend will know exactly what you mean. Now, I don't expect that your friend can fix anything for you but like I said, there's a sense of relief and joy when you're able to have somebody walk through a hard day alongside you. My friends, this is a season where we may relate more than other times to the exiles in this story. Their dreams for their futures unraveled when they were told to settle in. In a similar way, we may be experiencing an unraveling of our dreams right now. But as we walk through this season of exile, remember that we are not alone. Remember that even in exile, the Israelites have each other and we have each other. And even in exile, God did not leave the people alone and God has not left us alone either. To God be the glory, amen. My friends, what we've been doing as we pray for each other and pray for the, uh, the people, uh, we've been sort of going out and seeing if there are any prayer requests of you all. And so since usually that's me doing it. That's the affirmation of faith. Oh yeah, I just skipped the affirmation of faith. Look that's at that. Fine. Whatever. I skipped the affirmation of faith. We're gonna go back. <laughs> are you ready to go back? All right, <laughs> let's go back. But now you know you're more prepared for the prayers of the people than you were before. See how amazing that is? We now prepare for the affirmation of faith this evening using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall judge the quick and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now you're so ready to pray for each other. See how it works too? Invite those people though. Oh, and we're inviting the people on Facebook as well. See if we have any prayer requests from them. Any All prayer right. requests out here? Okay. The explosion yesterday? Yeah, I, I'm sure if you were in front of a television or the internet yesterday, you saw that there was a unbelievable explosion in Beirut. Um, the last count I saw that we had lost about 100 people and could be more by the time this is you're seeing this. And I know that there were thousands affected, both physically um, in terms of injury, but also their homes. Um, it was said that it was felt, I think, all the way to Cyprus. And so it was an amazing uh, and awful thing. And so we are certainly praying for the people of Lebanon and uh, for all those who are affected, um, for those who may be scared that they have lost people and they don't know yet, and for all those who are grieving. So let us, uh, let's pray now. God of love and God of expectation, God of hope and God of deliverance. We ask you this evening that you would walk with us as we seek your face and we seek to do your will. All of us here this evening bring our own burdens, our own joys. We expect great things. Sometimes we prepare for the worst and everything in between. So we pray for each other, even if they aren't said. We pray for people halfway around the world, for those who grieve, for those who worry, for those who plan. We pray for the helpers. We pray for medical staff. We pray for those who will help to rebuild. We pray that in these moments that things like borders and boundaries and the lines that we draw between each other because of faith or gender or anything else would be wiped away. And that we remember that we are loved by you in all ways. We thank you for this time to gather together. We thank you for the blessing that it is to commune. We're thankful for your son who is our example, our savior, and our God. And we pray now the prayer that he taught us saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we move into this time of communion, I want to invite all of you, whether you are here in person, you're joining us on the live stream, you're watching this later, to gather your communion elements, whatever that may be, as we move into this next moment. They never teach you anything about this in seminary, but there's something cool about watching people gather together and pull out whatever they have at their home that they can use as communion elements, whether that's a hot dog bun or hamburger buns, different kinds of juices. Um, we know that the Holy Spirit works in mysterious ways and is present with us through whatever elements we are able to bring together. As we were just talking about, we are living in unprecedented times and although it's sometimes we want to feel the joy and to find the silver lining in that, we have to admit on some level it's scary to live in times where we don't know what to expect next week, tomorrow, in the next hour. But something that we can rely on and that is not going to change is that um, our God loves us and our God is with us and our God has given us each other. 
And one thing we do know is that we can gather around this table and God will be present with us. Because this is not my table and this is not Northmont's table, this is not your table, but this is God's table of radical inclusion and all are invited. For on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he gathered his friends in an upper room and he took a loaf of bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup and he poured it out and he said, this is the new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of your sins. As often as you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, this cup we de declare the saving life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus until he comes again. My friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Please partake for all is ready. Let us pray. Gracious, loving, and holy God, we thank you for the ways that you are present with us that are clear. And we thank you even more for the ways that you are present with us that make no sense to our tiny human brains. We are thankful for the ways that you are present with us through each other here today. We ask that as we take in this bread and this cup, that you fill us with your love for other people. Help us to go out into the world and love others as you would have us love them. We ask that you fill us with your grace and your peace and remind us that you are with us, especially in those moments where we feel like we are in exile. We ask all of this in your son's name. Amen. So now we move into a moment of offering. And as we've been doing this on Sunday mornings, if you are here in person and brought an offering envelope, we are putting them in this table and there's a slot in the back of it. You're welcome to put them in here now or as you leave. If you are online, there are links and there are explanations in the weekly Piper. If you don't get the Piper, you can also email us or get in touch with us through the Facebook page and we would happily explain how that you, you can give offering. You can also use the good old fashioned snail mail and mail it into us. But let us take a moment and pray for those offerings. Gracious God, we know that all good things come from you. We ask that you take our offerings near and far and that you use them for the furtherance of your kingdom we ask this in your son's name amen
couple things to bring to your attention as we draw to a close this evening. Um, one, you are welcome, as Ben said on Sunday morning. We have two worship options. One is obviously right now, Wednesdays at 7 p.m., and one's is Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Um, you are welcome at either. We ask that each week you only choose one so that we are able to keep the numbers down and that we are able to social distance and do this responsibly. Also, as we move out into the week, I want to encourage you, as we do every week, to find a way to connect with one another. Um, you can join Ben tomorrow morning on Coffee with Ben. You can reach out to our Stephen Ministers, which is a group of people who are trained to be there for you and to talk to you and to listen to you. Um, we are here, the staff is here. So if there's anything you need, please reach out to someone. As I was saying in the sermon, uh, these are unprecedented times um, and we relate to the exiles probably now more than we may ever have in our lives before. But what's cool about that story is that although they were in exile, they were with each other and God never left them there alone. So as you go from this place, I hope that you took my challenge seriously and you thought of a name. That wasn't just something you say in a sermon. I really do want you to think of a name of a person and write it down somewhere and talk to them so that you have someone you know you can go to when you're having one of those days where you just can't handle it by yourself and you need someone to help bear that burden with you. But outside of that person, I want you to remember that you are never alone because we move forward with the Holy Spirit with us, with the one that uh, has created us and redeems us and sustains us now and forevermore. Amen. I'm gonna take a moment and spin the camera around so you guys can wave. Hi guys. Say hello. Look at yeah. Okay. There's Logan. Oh. And Ben. Okay, have a good evening guys.